For more inside and early morning activity, I am joined by Rebecca Walser, president of Walser Wealth Management. Rebecca, despite the earnings beats that we've seen from you know, UPS, PepsiCo, I think Coke yesterday, GE, inflation and supply chain pressures, they are kind of the big headwinds that all of these players are signaling, really being a concern for them for the rest of the year. What are the big takeaways that you have noticed from these reports? Well, I think that, you know, we can't underestimate supply chain problems and we can't um, underestimate our reliance on China. And that's the biggest takeaway, because if we do not reroute supply chains when we have the opportunity and then we have these situations where we have China with a zero COVID policy and we have so much like Foxconn with Apple shutting down again, you know, that is going to again make them re uh, do their estimates. And this is the thing that will continuously happen until we can figure out what kind of policy is going to work in China through this virus to keep international shipping and this just-in-time delivery system that we've all gotten used to, that all the corporations have now implemented, uh, that will work again? Because right now it's it's going to be a problem for the rest of the year. And it's fascinating because you look back at the beginning of last year, we thought this was a problem that would be easing really going into 2022, and it just continues to kind of linger. Moving, though, yeah. from, from consumer staples, so to speak, to, to kind of tech, right? Because this week is going to be a major week of tech earnings. We've got Microsoft and Alphabet. They're going to be reporting after the bell today. These are two major companies that make up 17 percent of the Nasdaq 100. What are you going to be watching, especially when it comes to advertising and cloud growth? Well, that's exactly what we're looking for. We want to see the number of dollars on the advertising revenue threshold. We want to see is consumer sentiment making these companies pull back um, and therefore not advertising the platforms and the advertising revenue is definitely going to take a hit and it's a leading indicator. So is that something that is going to continue to dampen future projections? Because if the advertising is not there, then obviously consumer sentiment uh, is being followed by companies that they think maybe the rest of the year is going to be a tough one between the Federal Reserve raising interest rates, making financials more expensive for the individual consumer at the credit card and mortgage level, car loan level versus what's happening. Now, on the tech front, obviously, they care because that's where all these advertisements for all of these consumer purchases come from. And so that's a big impact to both Google and Microsoft. Is the street expecting that pullback to happen in terms of advertising dollars kind of, kind of being pulled back? I, I think that we are looking for a relatively soft landing, if we could call it that, as the to borrow a term from the Fed. Um, so I think that it's not going to be so much this quarter as next quarter that we'll really start to see a shift in the consumer spending uh, for advertising. So that's going to be a really key number to look at and see what the trend is and see what we can really expect uh, coming next quarter. Continuing in, in the vein of tech here, earnings obviously from names like Apple, Meta Platforms, and even Amazon. Those are all going to be reporting um, later on this week. What are you going to be watching with those names specifically as well? The big thing with Apple is I, I want to see their revisions for, you know, the supply chain and Foxconn once again. You know, they, they're so dependent. It's almost like we look at Foxconn as a, as a subsidiary of Apple, even though it's technically not. And so that's the biggest thing. We want to see what is the impact for future projections for the rest of the year. We've already expected this year to be impacted thus far with inflation, with consumer sentiment. But we're really looking to see if what are these supply chains now looking into for forecasted projections for next quarter, because that's really where the year can go bad. We can really turn this around pretty quickly if we can get things back to moving. But if we're expecting that this is going to really impact us two to six months, you know, the supply chain interruptions that we're seeing in the Chinese seas right now could have an impact on this country for two to six months once it's ironed out. So that's that's getting things back moving and back shipping again. So we're really looking for the projections as opposed to this quarter. But I think this quarter will be happily surprised as we have been with all of the, uh, the ones that reported yesterday and today. Yeah, I think for earnings, we're at like 75 percent kind of beats uh, across the companies yeah. that have reported so far, which is pretty healthy and, and pretty decent. But then I look at the markets right now. I'm looking at the big board here at the NYSC and you've got the board solidly red. You got the VIX up to almost 29, 28.38 right now. Clearly signs of volatility yesterday was a, a clear kind of picture of that. When you look at kind of what's happening in the market as, as of late and then you look forward uh, on the market itself, What's your view of the market this month and what investors really should be paying close attention to? 
Well, I do like that earning season is looking really positive so far, but I think what's really happening is we're starting to see, it just came out yesterday, broke yesterday, that Israel now is losing their U.S. dollar reserves to China's Wuhan and, uh, you know, a basket of currencies. So what I start to, what I'm really seeing is this monetary change of the U.S. dollar as the sole reserve, and that has a massive impact on the dollar's purchasing power. That's going to have an impact on all of commodities across the world. And so it is a really global monetary situation that is impacting us beyond just supply chains, beyond geopolitical, you know, Russia, Ukraine invasion, beyond all of that, we have something happening on a monetary position globally that is going to have an impact that no one's really addressing and talking about. And I think that's why the market, even though uh, we have such great earnings numbers, the market is overall saying, hey, what's going on here? Let's take a pause. And we're not seeing uh, great projections for today. But, you know, we could whipsaw like we did yesterday. We could have red and then green. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see. I mean, we were solidly lower by the time I left the desk yesterday. We were right? lower by 400 points. And then, you know, I blink my eye and I look at my phone and I'm like, how are we in the green? But that's been the exactly. market as of late. And it doesn't surprise you when you look at the VIX right now. You kind of mentioned the Fed there. So I want to get your take on Fed activity. Um, yeah. Is the Fed kind of proceeding in the way that it should be? Or, or, or is it not hawkish enough, not dovish enough, not taking into consider the volatility, volatility in the market right now? What's your take? The Fed is between a rock and a hard place. There is no good yeah. turn for this Fed. I mean, when they say that they are going to do uh, 50 bips, and then the market reacts crazily. We then we only get 25 bips and Russia invades Ukraine. We pull back. We're worried about, you know, to being too overbearing on these corrective actions. Then the market says, oh, this isn't enough. Inflation's eight and a half percent. Now we need 50 bips. I've even had some prognosticators say 75 bips. Yeah. This is going to be hard for them. We got ourselves back into this corner and now we have to ease our way out of it. And it's not going to be a pretty sight. It's going to be difficult. But I mean, we have to deal with this inflation. We, we cannot have people losing, you know, 8 to 12 percent of their purchasing power on a yearly basis. That's just not workable. Yeah, I mean, to your point, the, the Fed really being in, in between a rock and a hard place, the reality is the Fed isn't beholden to the market. But we know that the Fed looks at the market or it seems like the Fed looks at the market and sees when it freaks out and really doesn't want that to kind of, you know, lead into the recessionary concerns. Um, but it does, to your point, have to get inflation under control. And you've got, you know, to your, your point there also, Bullard mentioning, you know, 75 basis points potentially, although the likelihood is, is more like 50 basis points. When you look at this greater macro picture, right? And you look at inflation kind of being the top of mind for so many of us, especially over the better part of the last two years, and really a major concern for the Fed. You think about the potential pullback that that's going to, to lead to with consumers pulling back. What do you see when it comes to consumer spending in terms of that potentially beginning to wane? Well, yeah, I mean, that's the biggest concern. You know, our economy is 70% consumer spending driven. We are a services based economy. And if people aren't consuming services, we have big problems in our U.S. country, which is affects all the advertising dollars and all the tech platforms. And our, it, it is all interconnected. So as consumer sentiment wanes and they think, gosh, not only am I not getting a raise, but I'm actually losing money because more of my dollar is going to food and gas to get to work. Uh, if they're even telecommuting anymore, and a lot of them work from home, you know, so this is a big problem. A lot of consumers are thinking we need to pull back credit card rates go up, mortgage rates go up. I mean, you have people that were just a month ago qualified for maybe twice as much house because the rates went from 3% into the sixes. So this is a huge impact. It affects real estate, it affects every piece of property in America and affects all of our services. And so consumer sentiment is very important and they need to feel like they're not losing the value of their dollar just because, you know, the year is passing. Rebecca, I've, had, I've got about a minute with you. So I want to kind of end on the big story of the day and get your thoughts, obviously, around Twitter and Elon Musk, the board approving Musk's offer to buy the social media platform. What is your take on, on the buyout um, and how do you see it impacting really even the other social media platforms? Well, it's a great question. I think for Twitter uh, shareholders, it was a good decision. I mean, I was seriously concerned about the board's decision to go for a poison pill and not really consider his offer. And once he put forth the financing, $25.5 billion in debt financing, another $21 billion in equity financing, once he put forth the financing, they took his offer seriously and they were able to get to the negotiating table. This is a good thing for the investors. You know, we'll see about what it does for the platform. I think free speech, I'm a libertarian, so free speech for me is always the best. But obviously, there's a lot of people on the progressive side that are really worried about hate speech. And so it's going to be a neat uh, neat path to follow uh, Elon Musk, who is a diehard, staunch free speecher. We'll see what that means when it comes to Twitter, because obviously that platform has made a lot of changes in the last uh, 24 months. 
and it's going to be changing back. So we'll see what those changes will look like. And I know that a lot of people have concerns, but I think more information is always better, you know, always more. And then you decide as an adult what information you do not think is accurate and what information you think is, you know, just fluff. And that's the kind of um, mindset that Elon Musk seems to be betting on, that more people feel like that. Rebecca, really appreciate your insight. Rebecca Walser, president of Walser Wealth Management.